There was a point in my life where I spent a long period of time playing a game mode on Call of Duty 4 Remastered called Prop Hunt. So this was a couple of years ago, but I remember having such a fun time because it always added that little bit of humour to a game that realistically wasn't that funny. And you know, when everyone's just running around firing shots and trying to figure out who is in an inanimate object, it's really funny to just see someone hiding out in the middle of the map as a tree in plain sight. So in this game, Prop Knight, it's kind of like that. But then you go ahead and you throw in a large dash of the ever-growing Dead by Daylight gameplay and you've come out with this incredibly strange hybrid baby type thing. So Prop Knight hasn't actually been released yet. The game is set to release on the 30th of November and I got to play it during the pre-release beta type thing. I think it was like a public launch or a public playtest, we'll say. But it was a very enjoyable experience and obviously as it's still not released, what we managed to play wasn't actually the final product. So take pretty much everything I'm going to say with a pinch of salt because as much as I enjoy it, it could release and then it could not have as much content as I would personally hope for or it could release and just be more broken than the public playtest actually was. So in this video we'll be drawing up the differences and also the similarities between Prop Knight and games like Dead by Daylight, mainly focusing on Dead by Daylight as the case study. So this game consists of five survivors and three different killers at the moment. Hopefully when the game releases there will be a few more added, but at the moment it's similar with the killers as it is in Dead by Daylight. Each killer has its own set of abilities. A good example of this is the killer called the Imposter. So this is personally one of my favourites. He has the same power as the survivors. He can turn into different props, as well as being able to turn into the survivors and mimic them. This is an amazing thing to happen because unless you know where all your teammates are, it can end up being really, really messy. So the way that they handle the deaths in this game is very similar to Dead by Daylight. In Dead by Daylight you get hit down and you get carried over to a hook and you get three lives essentially and then you, you, you're dead. And it's very similar in Prop Night, but in this one you get hit down and then you get put into a chair. So it's the same sort of concept, but at least in Prop Night you get to sit down. Playing as the killer is really enjoyable, but I find that when you're running around on the hunt it can be incredibly fun and also incredibly frustrating. One of my favourite things is having the chase. Watching people run and turn into random objects is very, very funny. The game does take a drastic change from Dead by Daylight in the way that it is. It's a lot less about having that big chase scene where you're all ducking and diving, throwing the panels down to try and, you know, get yourself away. It's more about being able to hide. So it's essentially just a very big game of hide and seek. As soon as you get chased, you need to turn into a prop and hide away from the killer. So one of the first differences I noticed between these two games was actually just in the lobby. So when you lobby up, you don't get to choose whether you want to be a survivor or a killer. You just join a lobby and then one out of the five people will end up becoming a killer. So I feel like this is great because you can then play with a group of friends and if there's five of you, you can all basically take it in turns to play the killer, which is a lot nicer because I assume it would still allow you to rank up without having to go through custom games. Obviously the ranking system isn't something that I know of, it wasn't actually included in the public test at all, so I don't really know if there's going to be one either, but if we're being completely honest I really hope there is. Because I feel like with a game like this you need some form of ranking system. I feel like having a goal that you're able to work towards in every aspect of life is really important and a video game really shouldn't be any different from that. But then again, realistically, what do I know? Because in Dead by Daylight, I haven't really ranked very high anyway. I think it's just a nice thing to add and have some form of progression system to the game would be perfect. So then we move on to the survivor part of the game. Now, this is where the game was incredibly fun for me and it was a lot more unique in comparison to the killer aspect. Because the killer aspect of this game is very similar to that of Dead by Daylight. But during the public test, we only really had access to two maps. One of them was an old American style farm with a massive cornfield in the middle, it was surrounded by lots of barns, and then the second one was just a huge haunted mansion. Personally my favourite map was the farm, like the house was really nice but it seemed to be a lot more difficult to hide in there. 
Although there was a moment where I just kind of hid as an extension lead in the middle of the room and it was hilarious because they just kept missing me. We did, however, find an exploit while we were playing on that one map, and it just seemed to be that if you turned into something and hid under a table, the killer wasn't able to actually touch you, which was very funny. I spent a lot of time by a generator turning into a chicken and just rolling underneath the table, and every time the killer would walk around, I'd just kind of roll back and roll forward so he could never hit me. I managed to survive for a very long time by just doing this one thing. Now, there are a few parts of this game that, honestly, I just, I really loved, but one of the main things was the maps. So the maps were so well designed and it was beautiful to just go around and have a look at the map. The aesthetic of the game is genuinely incredible, and each of the maps are very small in comparison to Dead by Daylight, but I think that kind of made the game a lot fairer. So the main difference between the two games is obviously in Dead by Daylight, if you're a survivor, you have to do a lot of looping, a lot of running the killer around, smacking them with pallets. But then obviously this game is a lot more centered around the becoming a prop and the hiding. Some of my favorite moments while we were playing in this public test were just getting chased and then turning into something ridiculous. Like I think there was one time I turned into a little bunny teddy bear on the farm and then just hid inside of the corn. I didn't get caught and it was amazing. But as well as the differences, obviously this game does have a lot of similarities with games like Dead by Daylight. So one of the biggest ones is that you do have generators that you have to do. But the difference in it is that this game has a time limit, so the time extends whenever an action is made. This could be stuff like fixing a generator or saving another player from certain death. This adds a different edge to the game, because although it's a game based around hiding, you can't just sit around and hide all game, and you are forced to do objectives or you will lose by default. But it's also really good to add that when you do try and do a generator, you can't do it while hiding as a prop. You have to turn back into your human form to do it. Whenever you complete tasks, you are also given coins. So at first, these coins really did confuse me, but after a couple of games, and once we just kind of got a bit more into it, it started to make a bit more sense to me. So the coins reset every game, and it seemed to me that the only thing that you can really use them for is for buying random items out of this weird chest thing. So this works in a similar way that Dead by Daylight do it, but instead of being able to take your item from one game to another, it's kind of stuck in each one. But you know, the devs giveth and the devs taketh away. Each survivor is also given an item at the start of each game. This item is however locked to each survivor. I'm unsure if they're going to change this when it comes to the release of the game or not, but some of the items you can get are stuff like a map or an energy drink. I think this is a great concept as this is one of the things that massively differs between both of the games. So I have played quite a lot of Dead by Daylight. I wouldn't really say that I'm a pro, because in all honesty, at least 70% of the time was either sat on the hook or crying in the menus waiting for it to join our game. But it is a game that I came to really enjoy, and I do still play it now. But the thing that I found during the time that I played Prop Hunt was that it was just incredibly fun to play. If you're playing with a couple of mates like I was, it was incredibly funny. Although the people that I was playing it with are also the people that I would usually play Dead by Daylight with, so obviously it's a similar game, similar sort of group. Overall, I think that there are a lot of similarities between the two games, but I also feel like that's probably just because Dead by Daylight has propelled the genre into the mainstream, and I don't really think that that's a bad thing. The team over at Fantastic have done an incredible job in making Prop Hunt and, sorry, Prop Night, and I think that they deserve a lot of props for it. I for one am very much looking forward to picking this game up when it launches, and I hope other people will feel the same way. If you want to see some live gameplay of this, feel free to head over to my Twitch channel, the link is in the description, and come and have a look at me and my friends, give this a go when everything launches. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, it is completely free, and if you don't want to stay subscribed in the future, you can always answer. Let me know down below what you think of the game, and feel free to like the video, as it really does help me out. I look forward to seeing you all again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.